What a magnamazing day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Today is Tuesday, 2-20-2024. And as I was doing my evening and morning devotion, what came to me was the darkest moments. Jeremiah 38, 6 says, so the officials took Jeremiah to his cell and lowered him by ropes into an empty cistern in the prison yard. It belonged to Malchijah, a member of the royal family. There was no water in the cistern, but there was a thick layer of mud at the bottom and Jeremiah sank down into it. The darkest moments. Daniel 3, 6 says, Anyone who refuses to obey will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. The darkest moments. Jonah 1, 15 through 17 says, Then the sailors picked Jonah up and threw him into the raging fire, and the storm stopped at once. The sailors were awestruck by the Lord's great power, and they offered him a sacrifice and vowed to serve him. Now the Lord had arranged for a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. The darkest moments. I leave you with this. A cistern is a well used for storing water. The one Jeremiah was placed in had no water and only mud. If the enemy throws you in a well, they probably won't leave the top off for you and then you are sinking in the mud. One way or another, you will find yourself in the darkest moments. The three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refuse to worship any other gods other than the God, our Father in heaven, the creator of all things and was found fully clothed and thrown into the fire. They found themselves in the darkest moments. When you read Jonah, you will see he ended up in the belly of the whale out of disobedience to God. He found himself in the darkest moments. Luke 22, 39 through 43 says, Then accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went as usual to the Mount of Olives. There he told them, Pray that you will not give in to temptation. He walked away about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I will, yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then the angel appeared from heaven and strengthened him. At last he stood up again and returned to the disciples, only to find them asleep exhausted from grief why are you sleeping he asked them get up and pray so that you will not give in to temptation the darkest moments john 6 66 through 69 says at this point many of his disciples turned away and deserted him then jesus turned to the 12 and asked are you going to are you also going to leave Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life. We believe and we know you are the Holy One of God. You see, we live in a world today that many seek answers from sources that do not follow the true God in heaven or from direct communication with God through prayer. When you stand for God's truth, at some point you will endure because rejecting God and Jesus as his son is and has become the trendy and normal thing of and in this world. Not just by talk, but also in action. The increasing evil spirit of outrage and anger. 
the child abductions, sexual immorality, homosexuality, human trafficking, pedophilia, the thirst for more, more money, more power, more followers, more influence by selling of the souls for just their 15 minutes of fame. The moments are getting darker. In Mark 5, Jesus heals a demon-possessed man. Then he was met by a synagogue leader whose daughter was dying. And while on his way to their home, he was touched by a woman who thought she had run out of options in an effort to stop bleeding. They were all in their darkest moments. In Genesis 37 through 50, Joseph was sold into slavery by his brother, then in prison after being lied on by Potiphar's wife. And he became the leader, a leader over all of the resources in Egypt in his darkest moments. In Matthew 14, John the Baptist was beheaded while in prison. In Acts 12, Peter was arrested by King Herod Agrippa. In Daniel 6, the king's advisors were jealous of Daniel and figured the best way to kill him was to throw him into the lion's den. And throughout the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you read that Jesus was denied in prison, beaten, pierced, and killed all so that we could be healed or rescued in our darkest moments. Remember, whether your darkest moments are self-inflicted or at the hands of the enemy of God, whether you continue to live or physically die, doing the Lord's work, every hardship, every trial, every tear, every heartbreak are moments meant for a greater purpose. That purpose is John 4, 8. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. That purpose is Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. That purpose is to have faith and to pray. Matthew 21, 21 through 22. Then Jesus told them, I tell you the truth. If you have faith and don't doubt, you can do things like this and much more. You even say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. You can pray for anything and you will have it. If you have faith, you will receive it. That purpose is 1 Corinthians 9, 23. I do everything to spread the good news and to share in its blessings. That purpose is Revelations 21, three through four. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death, no more there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Eternal life in heaven. Dear God, the creator of all things, I pray that in our darkest moments, you answer our prayers. Because we have or you know we will put you first in our life and have been devoted to you, giving more of our time over giving our time to things of this world. Heavenly Father, I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice will have a magnum amazing day and leave a legacy doing legendary things, serving you while serving others and putting their needs before our own, especially in what we feel or are our darkest moments. I pray that in the power of the name of Jesus, our purpose is your blessing. God bless.